In creoparametric sheet metal, bends can also include transitions and relief. This part will help me show you how to use both of those functions. I want this part to end up creating a cable clamp. I want this upper part over here to be curved. Then I want it to transition to being straight again. And then I want to bend it where it's going to mount to a component. Let's start off by creating a bend. And right now, if I go to the placement tab, I can select a bend surface or my bend line. Let's choose this surface to bend. And if I click on the bend line tab, rather than using these two drag handles in order to choose where my bend line is going to be, I'm going to sketch it. So I click on the sketch button. Let's add in one other sketch reference. Let's grab this top surface over here and close out of the references dialog box. And I'm just going to sketch a line and I want it to be bent here down to about over there. That's good. Let me change my dimension. I want it to go eh, about 1.25. So that is good for my bend line. Let's hit the check mark to get out of sketch mode. And you can see right now how it is bending the geometry. I actually want to use a roll bend instead. And the preview goes away because the value is way too small. Let me try 0.5. And let's try a little bigger to start out with a value of 1. But right now it's just rolling one side. If I click on the arrow to flip the fixed side, it just changes which side it wants to go on. I actually want to bend both sides. So let's try to choose bend on both sides and you see that ends up just curving everything this is not working right now because i have to add in a transition from where i want it to be curved to go to flat let's click on the transitions tab on the ribbon then i'll click on add transition the sketch button becomes available so i'll click on sketch and when i go into sketch mode over here let's add in a couple more references for the side surfaces just so I can lock into them when I am sketching. So let's close out of there after clicking the solve button. And you're going to sketch two lines for your transition. The first line is where the transition starts and the second one is where the transition ends. Let's start off with a straight line. I'll go from here about over there. That's good. And then another one from about here over to there. That's good for that one. And I've got some dimensions over here. Let's change these dimensions to the values that I want. This I want this one to be 0.125. That's good. Let's make this one 375. That's good. I'm happy so I can hold down the right mouse button and from the pop-up menu choose the check mark to save the sketch and exit. And now you see a preview of the geometry the way that I want it to. It's curving both sides up here and it's using that roll bend which means it's just curving out to the end of the material. And then we have our transition. You can see how it transitions from curved here eventually ending up straight down over there. So that is pretty good except for that I want it to be a little more curved and I can drag out. Oh, nope, that's not it. And I want it to hold some cables inside of here and hold them a little snugly. Uh, let's try, I want to be open. Let's try 0.65. There, I like that value. That looks good for my cable clamp. Let's hit the check mark out of here. So there I have my first bend in the model that is using the transition. For the next bend, I want to bend this down over here. So let's choose to create a bend. And for the placement, rather than selecting the surface, I'm just going to pick the edge where this bend starts. And rather than have it right there at the bend, first off, let's flip the fixed side. There we go. Now we're getting it bent in the direction that we want it to. And we have a drag handle here for a dimension. If I don't want it to be right on the bend itself. 
and I can plug in an actual value here or by double clicking on the dimension. So there we get a little bit more straight before it bends downward. So that bend is looking good. And again, I just used an edge in this particular case and then offset from the edge, but you don't have to offset if you don't want to. Be aware there is a details button that'll help you construct different edge chains if you so need it. Let's cancel out of there. That is good. Let's hit the check mark, complete our second bend. And the last bend that I put in the model here is the one that's actually going to have relief. So for the last bend, let's click on the bend tool and pick the surface that we want to locate it on. And I'll use the third method for locating the bend. I'm just gonna grab the drag handles over here and snap them to those vertices. And it's using the wrong side as remaining flat. Let's hit the flip arrow in order to change the fixed side. Again, that's the same thing as this button on the dashboard. I will keep the upper part fixed and I've got it in here. And right now the radius of the bend is using the thickness. I'm gonna change it from the drop down list to two times the thickness, just to show you inside of here that this is a situation where we're automatically getting relief. In other words, we're automatically getting a cut in those areas there in order to relieve the metal geometry. If you want to change the relief, you can do that from the relief tab. First, we have this button over here if you want to define both sides separately. For example, side one has rip relief. I'm not sure which one is side one or side two, but if I activate the button for side two and change it to something different like rectangular relief, oh, okay, I can see that this relief changed on this side, so this must be side two and this is side one. But most of the time, I usually want relief to be the same on both sides. So let us clear that check mark and go to the type drop down list. And first, I'll show you what's going to happen with no relief. And I want you to pay attention, especially right here on the screen after I choose no relief. What it's doing is it is bending the entire length of the geometry. Instead, if we change to the default of rip relief, you can see that essentially it's just cut, putting a cut in here in order to provide the relief. Let's take a look at the next option, the stretch relief. And with the stretch relief, you can see how it's basically going from the flat geometry over here into the curved geometry. You have two dimensions to control in this situation. First off, you have the relief angle and then the relief width. Right now, it's using the sheet metal thickness as the same value uh, of the, as the width. You could also choose two times the thickness, or you could manually enter in some value that you wanted to use, and they're adjusted in there. Let's go to the next option, rectangular relief. And so here you can see how it's being created. We have a few different controls over here. Right now, it is going up to the bend, but instead you could choose to specify a blind depth. And right now it's using two times the thickness. This is 60 mils, and so this is 0.12 inches. Instead, you could type in a value, for example, if I wanted to be 0.025, you can see how it gets shorter, or I could change it to 0.05. There we're just controlling how deep into the material that it's going to end up creating the depth of it. Also, you could choose the depth in the other direction. Right now, it's using through all. If you choose to do a blind depth, that's where you're using a numerical value for the distance from here to over here. The default value is four times the thickness. You can see that we're actually still going to end up with some remaining material on the outside. I don't really want that, but you could choose to next instead, which in this particular situation is the same situ thing as through all. But again, you could also specify a numerical value uh, using the blind option. And here we have the width of the relief. And again, you could choose thickness instead. Here it got a little wider, two times the thickness or you could just punch in a value. So for example, maybe I wanna use 0.1. And that is good for rectangular. The last choice that we have on here is obround, which is essentially a rectangle that's rounded at the end. And we have some choices over here. So for example, 
we have a blind depth for the uh, how rounded it's going to be. You could also choose up to bend. So here we can see the bend and there's your the round goes up to the bend or you could choose tangent to the bend. And so there we have the bend and you can see the tangent of the radius or again you could choose blind and we have a value 0.05. We try 0.075 and so then it goes a little straighter out before it curves in there and we also have our depth so we have two necks you could choose blind instead and this is the same situation that we had before where again this by using the default value four times the thickness it would leave some material in there or you could choose through all alternatively and we also have our width still has that same previous value that I entered in or we could change to the material thickness. And so now we have our relief configured. Let's hit the check mark. And so that way I ended up creating three different bends in my model in order to create my wire cable harness clamp that I can use. So we saw two different things in here. Uh, primarily from the Ben's dashboard, we saw that you could add transition and you could add relief. Two other things that I want to show you in terms of how you can control those default values. Let's go to model properties, which I have in my quick access toolbar. But if you don't have in your quick access toolbar, you can go to file and then prepare model properties. Inside of here, we have a sheet metal group because this is a sheet metal part. Inside of here, you can see that we have a relief area. And so for relief, I can click on the change button. And there are two different groups of relief settings. We have corner relief, but I'm not doing corner relief because I'm not using flange walls in here. We also have bend relief. And you could specify your default type of relief. And you can see when I hover over this, it's also co uh, controlled by a sheet metal parameter. SMT, sheet metal, DFLT, default, bend relief type. Instead, from the drop-down list, you could choose no relief, stretch, rectangular, or ob round. Maybe, let's go through these one by one because I want to show you that you have different dimensions depending on which one you set as the default kind of bend relief. If I choose no relief, all these are grayed out. Rip relief, like you just saw, also everything is grayed out. If I go to stretch relief, here we have the width and the angle. And again, if I hover over this, it'll tell me what sheet metal parameter that corresponds to. And similarly, here's the one for the sheet metal default bend relief angle. All the other ones are grayed out. If we change from stretch to rectangular, now you can see that we have the length, default is through all, and we also have our width, we have our bend relief depth type, and our bend relief depth value. Finally, we have our ob round relief, and with ob round relief, once again, we have the length, we have the thickness, we have the depth, and we have the depth value. So there you can set in a particular model what you want to use for your sheet metal preferences for the bend relief type. All of these correspond to different parameters. Let me click the OK button out of here. To get to your parameters, you can also do that from the model properties dialog box. You could click on this blue change hyperlink, but I'm going to close out of there. You can also get to it from the model intent overflow menu on the model tab, or you can go to the tools tab and choose parameters. This is a command that I use so often I've added it to my quick access toolbar. So when we go into parameters over here, we have a lot of different ones in here. And let's scroll down here. We can see that we have our sheet metal default bend relief type. Here's where I changed it to ob round. And we can see some of the other different parameters for the relief width, relief depth type, relief length type, relief depth, relief length, and relief angle. And some of these, like the width and the depth and the length, are controlled by relations. That means that we have different equations that are controlling those. Let me click OK to get out of here. 
You can get to your relations from your tools tab, also from the model tab. It's available in the model intent overflow menu right here. And it's also available from the model properties dialog box. Let's click on relations, click on the blue change hyperlink. And so here we have a number of different relations. Here we have three relations that control the default values for the bend relief width, the bend relief depth, and the bend relief length. And you can see that they are functions of the sheet metal thickness. Let's click OK out of here and close. And so that's how you have your different sheet metal preferences, your parameters, and your relations also related to your bend feature. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.